Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be talking a little bit today about the Geekcom A5. This is a machine that was sent to me for review. And, uh, and so that's what we're going to be looking at today. So first of all, it is an AMD Ryzen 5. It's a 7430U. So that's a mobile processor. It has six cores and 12 threads. Uh, this one comes with a GPU that is the um, uh, version 7, I think, uh, of that. And, uh, and so, yeah, it's a pretty good one. It has 16 gig of memory. It has a real NVMe. Now, a lot of these small form factor mini PCs either are usually SATA, but not this one. This one comes with a uh, half a gig, or excuse me, half a terabyte of NVMe disk storage, and that has all four lanes. What is this device? It is a, uh, it's a compact mini PC with an AMD Ryzen performance. Uh, today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it some, through some tests and see how it handles. So the design and build of the uh, Geekcom A5, it's a case matte black alloy, uh, aluminum alloy chassis that's kind of compact. I mean, it's not very big. It's kind of, it's, uh, it again, would fit in the palm of your hand. It's about... Uh, in in millimeters, it's about 117 by 112 by 50 millimeters. The weight of it is about 1.43 pounds or so, uh, and that doesn't include the PSU. But it does have solid rubber feet, uh, so that will keep it from sliding around on your desktop or in a rack if, if you're putting it there. As far as ports, uh, you have... USB-C, that's a 3.2 Gen 2, that's on the front side. That is data only, it's not a power port. You have two USB-A 3.2, those are both Gen 2 as well. And a 3.5 millimeter combo audio jack, so microphones and headset. On the rear, you have two HDMI 2.0 ports. There are two USB-A 2.0, that'd be for your keyboard, of course, and mouse. One by uh, USB-C, that supports DisplayPort plus power. And there's a one, uh, one by RJ45 gigabit Ethernet, which, according to their literature, supports up to 2.5 gigabits per second. As you can see, this one, if you look down here in the, the CPU, is a six-core at 4.2, now that's boost, that's not, yeah, that's, that's boost speed, 4.39 gigahertz. Yeah, and it is a, a Radeon Vega 7 integrated graphics card, so it will use uh, your existing memory, because that's where they draw from. RAM, you can, it has, uh, you can put up to 32 gig of uh, DDR4-3200 memory into this. So it is dual channel, and it comes with 16 gig. The GPU's uh, stress test and her GL mark scored uh, 3,600 to 4,000 points. So it's capable. Uh, I don't think I would recommend this for gaming. Let's see how this does. So a little bit faster than Windows. Uh, and I'll show you those tests in a minute. I got 1990 for a single core and 6823 on multi core. Yeah, this this will ramp up and then it will. There we go. It'll peg the processor. Now we should start building up a little heat. These tests are designed to actually stress a machine to see how well it performs uh, close to the edge. So this is going to push it really, really hard, a lot harder than you should push it in, in uh, your, your daily workloads. But it gives you some idea of how far you can push the machine and how well it'll continue to cool. They say about 42C is where we should see it. 42 to 45 is what they, they say, the idle temp idle temperatures should be 
Uh, Geekon does a really good job of publishing their technical information about the systems more so than any other company I have ever seen. So they are fully transparent. And yes, uh, it is, it might go below, we'll see, but it, it looks like they are absolutely correct. There's 42. So that's at the lower end of their, what they expect their idle temps. Now they, of course, measure this on Windows, not Linux. Low temps, they said about 83 to 87. But did we see that? I have a temperature setting here, which is the aggregate. That's the one the system goes by. And then, yeah, they're already up to 62 here. Let's see what the, but the aggregate is climbing very quickly. I'm trying to see where it actually reads that from maybe edge. Yeah, it's reading from edge. Right here, it's reading from right here. I'm not getting any, I'm getting warnings that the CPU is overloaded, but I'm not getting any warnings on temperature. In fact, it's showing green. It's showing that it's well within the spec. Or it's 70 now on the T controller. 72 is the high so far. So I'm not even coming close to what they say their load range is. And that, again, this is they measure on Windows, and Windows is going to be heavier than Linux. What I think I'm going to do is I have MX Linux AHS. That's their advanced. Um, kernel or advanced hardware edition and so I thought well let's try that and see if that works so I'm going to boot up the machine here I'm going to have to hit the delete key get into the now one of the things you'll notice with the, the BIOS here and I don't I don't have the latest version I think the latest version came out in April but you'll notice that I don't have a lot of control over the options on the machine. It seems to be a growing trend that, you know, you can't go in and I can't go overclock memory. And, yeah, I can see it. I can see the current speed, and the max speed seems to be locked off. I can set the optimized default, but I don't seem to be able to do much. I can't go in and turn on things like... Uh, you know, the ability to have virtual machines, uh, virtual devices. But anyway, that's a topic for another day. That's the USB stick I want to boot into. And so we're going to force it. There we go. And you'll notice that it says MX23.6AHS. That's what we want. So I'm going to... I'm going to try to install this and see what the kernel version is. I mean, I'm, I'm new to MX, so forgive me for my ignorance. But I just haven't used it as much as some of you may have. All right, let's take a look. Make that a little bigger for you. Now let's just take a look here. 6.14.2. That is a fairly recent kernel. I think the latest version of 6.14 is .9. And it could very well update once we get this installed. But okay, so let's, let's see what happens. Let's install it. See if we get all the devices. That's good. And we don't need to do that. I did that already. Where's the other drive? Ah, there's the other drive. There's what my problem was right there. That's okay. I don't want to overwrite my drive, my boot drive. Okay. Let's see if it likes that any better. Oh, yeah, it does. At some point, it's, if I remember, the last time I installed MX, 
It's going to pause here in a minute and wait for me to finish filling out all the forms before it completes. Yep, it's paused. Okay, so let's spin through. Yeah, that's right. This is wrong. For me, anyway. Got the time zone. Now it's fat and dumb and happy. Do I want to auto log in? Nah. Okay, it's on its way again. Wow, that was pretty quick. That's a fast install. Okay, it says it's done. All right, let's reboot it. Okay, let's see if it comes up. Yep. Okay. Let's go ahead and update it. Well, this is great news. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, having the uh, latest kernel solves a lot of the problems. <laughs> Yeah, I figured we'd be a little behind. Yeah, okay. This might be a while. But, uh, yeah, this is great news because this allows us to get away from System D and at the same time have newer hardware that we can use to do it with. I want to go back and try, since this worked, I want to go back and try uh, FreeBSD I was going to try version 15. That one is not actually coming out until December, I think, of 2025. I mean, it won't be officially released, but you can you can get a testing release right now. So this, the, the, the Geekcom A5, from what I can see, it needs the same kernel version as the 12th gen Intel. So that would put it somewhere around maybe 610, somewhere around in there. I could be wrong about that. I'm doing it from memory. So I will check and I'll print it on the screen when I find it. But it is, by the way, well supported. Uh, we're missing firmware uh, for the GPU. Oh, but it found it. It found something. It says possible missing firmware. Now, the firmware for AMD and this should be in the kernel. It, it, it shouldn't need it out here. So I'm not all that concerned about that. We'll see if it'll, re, if it'll boot <laughs> and we get our graphics display back. All right, so let's restart it. This is when it looked more like Unix than Linux. All right. Hey, look at this. Okay, let's see. Is it fine? Yep, yeah, it did. It found it. Yeah, so like I said, so it should be in the kernel. Six cores, 12 threads, in case you're wondering. Sees the temperature sensors here. This version of Glances may not put it up here. Should put it under the CPU right underneath here. Um, but I don't, this looks a little, this looks like the older layout. All right, so there, there's the machine right there. Uh, 279 is what it's currently going for. And I have a coupon code that I will put down below if you're interested. So what do I think about this? Uh, I think that, I mean, it's a fantastic deal. So in conclusion, I think, I think the box... In conclusion, I think the box offers a lot of capability for a very low cost. Again, just like uh, the video I did that was talking about what are we going to do in October, 
when it comes time to ante up to buy new hardware because Windows 11 does require a TPM 2.0 chip. Uh, anyway, suffice it to say, uh, I think... I think uh, I, th I think the box is gonna it's gonna do great. I'm I'm gonna my use case for this is there are a number of machines behind me that are running Ubuntu. There's one less. I have removed one of them, uh, and I have three to go. I, the main thing was to trial it and make sure that it would work fine, and it does. And so now, uh, yeah, it, it took me a while to figure out which one of these I wanted to go with. I think uh, I think MX might be just the right thing to keep going forward with a desktop. So with that, that's all I had. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe and check out the link in the description if you're interested for the discount code. And bye for now.